the loaned engines. Dear viewers, do you remember 87546 and 9462, the two blue tender engines from the first three illustrations of the three railway engines? Well, they happen to be background engines without names inserted into earlier railway series volumes by William Middleton and C. Reginald Dalby. In 1963, a young reader from New Zealand named Ross wrote to the Reverend W. Audrey asking who they were and if they were featured in other stories. However, Audrey invented an explanation that they were root engines on trial who were quickly sent away, hence why they did not feature in any other stories. While many fans invented their own theories of how they were sent away, what they were based off of, and what their wheel arrangements are, these stories will cover it all. The author. Spiteful Gesture Written by Mainland Studios, adapted, edited, and told by July Leonard. It had been a few weeks since Edward had taken his first passenger train, and Gordon got stuck on a hill with a goods train. It had been his first day out in a very long time, and almost all the engines had given Edward their full support, especially Gordon. However, two did not. The fat director had bought two blue engines from the mainland to the Northwestern Railway on trial, and they were quite displeased with Edward. They didn't have any names, only numbers. 87546, the LNER Gresley K1, and 9462, the LNER Raven B16. These two engines had a great deal in common. They were both rude and cocky. However, unlike Gordon, those two engines never seem to know when enough is enough. Hmm, you finally managed to make it out of the station! cackled 9462, as they were back down in the sheds one night. Edward had returned from his passenger run and was feeling quite proud. What a useless engine you are, Edward. I'm sure we'll be hearing plenty of complaints from the passengers tomorrow. Indeed, agreed it's in 546. You must have been running late all day. The others gave the two engines a foul look, but Edward just smiled. Actually, we were right on time. I'm very happy to be useful again, he chuckled. <laughs> he chuckled. Edward knew that as long as he did not let 9462's words bother him, same for 87546, the engines wouldn't berate him for long. And soon enough, not getting any sort of reaction out of Edward, the two big blue bullies drifted off to sleep. As Edward was now working regular on passenger runs, the fat director had extended his timetable to have them run later in the evenings. This now meant Edward Gordon A. 9462 will be running passenger services all across the island of Sodor. Edward had his doubts, but was determined to work his hardest. Fortunately for him, he ran the loop line to sub Gordon in 9462, ran for the big station at Knapford, at the other end of the line. The weeks passed. Edward felt his trains getting heavier and heavier, or he was getting older and older. The other engines had noticed this and even offered to help, including Gordon. No thank you, panted Edward. You have your own trains to manage. We can't upset the fat director's timetables. Little did he know, 9462 had heard everything and began in to make a plan. Next morning, Edward had arrived at the station at Vickerstown to collect his first passenger train for the day. When he arrived, he only saw he saw that there were no coaches. Thomas must have woken up late again, he thought. He was just about to collect some more when he heard 9462 came whistling and wishing into the platform with Edward's coaches. No need to fret, he said snootily. I'll be taking your train today. You mustn't upset the fat director's timetables. He laughed loudly as the guard blew his whistle and he set off. 
Edward was upset, but he thought it was best he get on with his work. That evening, Edward was backing into his berth as 9462 was boasting loudly, I've proven that I can manage two trains at once. I can do even I can even do better with three. Why keep him around when all he does is get in the way? Eight seven five four six ag uh, agreed, but the other engines didn't. Edward helped build these rails that you've run on, fumed Thomas. Without them, None of us have a none of us have a railway to work on. 9462 interjected. Edward is a thing of the past. Us bigger tender engines are faster, stronger, or more up to date than old iron. Or silly tiny little tank engines like you for that matter, added 87546. Thomas felt very hurt, but Edward on the other hand finally gave up. He decided to take a stand against 9462. The next morning, he woke up earlier than usual to collect his coaches and make it to the platform at Vickerstown Station before 9462. The yard was silent, and Edward felt sure that he had beaten 9462. And what do you think you are doing? fussed 9462. Edward tried to sound brave. Collecting my coaches for my passenger train. Hm, I don't think so, 9462 growled. You are nothing but slow and old. You are going to sit in the shed until you are sent away, or even better, scrapped. Before Edward could say another word, 9462 backed down onto his line and coupled to his coaches. Edward's heart sank, but not for long. And just what do you think you are doing? bellowed a familiar voice. It was the fat director. Er, um, collecting my coaches from my train, sir, 9462 replied, trying to look as innocent as he could. From what I've just seen, that is not the case at all. I've had passengers complaining, saying that they were taken to the wrong stations, and furthermore, fellow workers complaining about your treatment to others. 9462, whose face turned white as a ghost. My engines, the fat director went on, work hard and help fellow engines. You have done neither of those. Let me remind you that I have brought you and 87546 here to work here on trial, and I can see that you are not fit for my railway. I should... You shall stay in the sheds till I've decided what to do with you. But until then, I want you to go back to the sheds immediately. 9462 couldn't muster of a response, so he seethed with fury as he sulked back to the sheds. The fact director turned to Edward. You must understand, Edward. You are one of my engines. You might not think so, but you are not alone on this railway. I'm pleased that you tried to take a stand to 9462, but, you ha but if you have any troubles at all, you must come and see me right away. Understand? Yes, sir, said, replied Edward. He could see from his warm smile that the fat director was told everything. He looked across the yard and saw Henry, Gordon, and Thomas smiling back. Now, you have a train to pull. And then after that, I want you to have a nice long rest. As Edward set off, he felt his position on the Fat Director's Railway was secure and had no tr more troubles from that day on. That was until 87546. But I mustn't say any more or I shall spoil the next story.